Dr. Neelish Goswami, interventional cardiologist, director of cardiac cath lab, Baylor Scott and White, Hillcrest Hospital in Waco. And Dr. Goswami joins us on 365 Sports. Paul Craig and I'm David Smoke. Doctor, again, thanks for your time. I was uh, back and forth today with uh, Matt Rohrer, and he said that you all started trading texts last night. When were you watching the game, or did someone alert you to what was going on? What happened with uh, the timeline with you? Yeah. Um, well, as luck would have it, uh, or I shouldn't use the word luck, but uh, what I was doing at the time of the game was uh, – dealing with a patient that had a cardiac arrest here, in fact. Uh, and so I was just headed home and I was getting some texts from friends and my brother that uh, I needed to turn on the, the Monday night game that they were doing CPR on one of the Bills players. So walk us through the process a little bit to what would happen in, in a trauma like this on the field, which is so so rare to have to use an AED and to perform CPR on someone when they get an injury. Yeah. Well, I, I think you, you said it correctly. It is rare. And so uh, I think for somebody to be overly prepared for a situation like this would be asking a little too much, right? It, it's just, just such an unusual and rare occurrence that I think it's hard for sideline personnel to be ready to jump on a situation so quickly. I think what we're used to seeing, you know, watching this game for so long is, is orthopedic injuries and the concussions and some neurologic issues. Um, but to see somebody suffer from a, a cardiac event on the football field, it, it is very, very unusual. So, Doctor, to, to hear what you heard as far as the updates, and we're still very much in the dark on certain things, obviously, but, uh, you know, critical condition, uh, level one trauma facility, receiving treatment. Can you kind of explain what that's probably entailing uh, in some cases? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think what we should maybe start at is is the point of what's a cardiac arrest, right? Sure. Uh, cause people have their own interpretation and definitions of what is, what is a cardiac arrest. And, and then to take it a step further, what's the difference between a cardiac arrest and a, and a heart attack? And, uh, cause all those words have kind of been thrown in uh, to the discussion with respect to, to Hamlin's case. So, you know, first of all, a heart attack is basically when one of the arteries to the heart itself gets blocked off and the heart muscle itself cannot get vital fuel to function properly. And the symptoms of that are typically chest pain, the elephant, you know, sitting on the chest, uh, classic symptoms that we've all seen either on television or read about or or seen uh, in a movie. Uh, And and I think most people are well-versed at picking that up. What's not so clear is is the sensitivity of a, a cardiac arrest. And so a cardiac arrest Whereas a heart attack is more of a plumbing issue. You know, we're not getting adequate amounts of blood into the muscle due to a blockage in the fuel line, if you will. Uh, cardiac arrest is more of an electrical issue. So the, the rhythm of the heart, which is normally very consistent uh, and uh, repetitive, now becomes erratic to the point where it is not contracting in an organized fashion and there's no output of blood to all the vital organs in the body. So each time the heart contracts, it's squeezing blood to your brain, to your kidneys, to your liver, to your legs, every part of the body. If if there is no organized contraction, blood cannot be delivered to these vital organs. And the result of that is you are essentially, you collapse, right? And if that rhythm is not resuscitated or, or converted back to normal, this could result in death. It could be fatal. Dr. Goswami, how long, as far as every second counts, right, before the, the CPR, before they start getting oxygen where it needs to be or blood where it needs to be? Yeah. Yeah, it's a great question. Um, and and it, it, it's specific to each organ system, right? So, you know, if we talk with the most about the most fragile organ system first, it's the brain. So the brain typically stops functioning or gets injured or damaged within four to six minutes of no oxygen. And, and that's the most critical organ. And it's, it's the most fragile organ. So that's the probably the first organ that we see some damage occurring if 
if CPR or the rhythm is not restored within minutes, four to six minutes. Uh, you know, the heart itself, an artery can be blocked off for hours and we can open it and we can still get some recovery. Uh, there, there is some mild amount of damage, but we could still get substantial recovery even hours later. You know, if you, if you block off the artery to your leg, you can probably live with that for six hours, right? Uh, but, the, but the, in, in this situation and in most situations of cardiac arrest, we are most concerned about the brain. And, and so the key is initiating CPR in a quick, timely fashion. And then not only initiating it, doing it properly where it's effective, where we're actually pushing blood to the vital organs and maintaining that oxygen level. So one of the most troubling things about this for the, for everybody is we've, we've heard very little about what's gone on and it's been, you know, quite a long time since last night. Is that typical in situations like this? And again, it, it, it's, it's reckless to be speculative, but what kind of goes on in these periods where you're, you're trying to investigate the cause of, of the, of the cardiac arrest. Yeah. So, you know, I'll just address cardiac arrest in, in general, kind of as patients come into the hospital, uh, you know, they typically get resuscitated first. That's critical, right? So if CPR is still ongoing, the, the treatment, the most common rhythm abnormality for these cardiac arrest patients is something called ventricular fibrillation. And the way you treat ventricular fibrillation is you shock the patient. So these patients need an AED if they're outside the hospital. If they're in the hospital, we have uh, dedicated defibrillators. And you can shock the rhythm back to normal. And, and so CPR is, is critical, number one step, because most people can do CPR without any additional equipment. You just need your hand. And, and the second most critical piece to this in terms of resuscitation is an AED, a defibrillator. Uh, so those are the two things we kind of focus on first. And then after the patient stabilized, it depends. If you get to them quick enough and you get the rhythm back quick enough, they typically wake up and, and, and there's really no injury because if it's less than a few minutes, uh, you know, we, we haven't created any injury yet. So the patient typically is almost nearly back to normal uh, instantaneously. Now, if, if the event lasts for some period of time, you go over that six-minute mark, then we may start to see some effects of injury to the brain, and, and that would essentially may represent itself as a, a coma or just inability to respond, inability to wake up. Uh, and again, as you state, it's hard to speculate, you know, what's happened in his particular situation, Hamlin's particular situation, but I'm just talking in generalities here. Uh, so if, if, the, if the neurologic status is in question, then sometimes these patients get put on ventilators uh, to breathe for them to protect their airway uh, so we can oxygenate the blood that is circulating now throughout the body. And then in a lot of cases, if, if they if they aren't waking up or showing signs of any meaningful neurologic recovery immediately, we will perform something called therapeutic hypothermia where you, you cool the body down. And so you've probably all heard of these cases where drowning victims, you know, under the ice, they were under there for 20, 30 minutes and they survived and really had no deficit. Well, why is that? It's because we've come to learn that if we cool the body down, the amount of injury caused to the body a lot less than if the body stays warm. Uh, and, and so that's a, a practice that's quite common in patients after a cardiac arrest. We are uh, today joined by Neelish Goswami. He, again, is a part of Baylor Scott & White Hillcrest Hospital, Director of Cardiac Cath Lab. And I, there's a, a first responder who watches our show. He said, has he ever seen a case involving chest trauma that caused sudden cardiac arrest where the impact was during the T-wave of the heart that started cardiac arrest. Does that question make sense to you? Yeah. So, so there is an entity in, in kind of talking to other cardiologists uh, last night and this morning. I mean, we, we've all kind of tried to hypothesize what happened, right? You, you, everyone wants to know what happened. Uh, and, and again, we're, you know, I, I'm respectful of his privacy and the situation uh, there with their family and, 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 we deal with that on, on a day-to-day -day basis. But 
I, I think, you know, as far as a, a hypothesis is, is that that traumatic hit precipitated a cardiac arrest. And so there is a condition that can do that called commotial cortis, um, which is a Latin word for basically an erratic heartbeat. And, and what can happen in that situation is if a blunt force blow is delivered in the perfect spot in the chest at the perfect time. And what this T wave is, he's referring to is, you know, on the EKG, there's all these little glitches. And one of the little glitch is called a T wave. And, and if the blow comes, this is milliseconds, right? The blow has to come 10 to 30 milliseconds below the peak of the T wave, and it'll create this sudden cardiac death situation. And so this is an extremely rare condition. This occurs, there's actually a registry in the United States for this particular condition, and they usually get about 10 to 15 updates a year, right? So it, this is not something that occurs often. Uh, and, and it can occur during a baseball game where a baseball player gets hit in the chest mm -hmm. uh, with, with a high-velocity pitch. Softball, hockey players, hockey puck, lacrosse ball, and football. These are the most common sports where this condition can occur. When you saw the ambulance on the field and, of course, everybody surrounding the, the situation with, uh, with DeMar Hamlin, and I know that sometimes we have to stop in, like, my goodness, first responders, those who help you, what you do, those in the medical business, the trainers, the doctors, the team doctors, the Bills, the Bengals. I mean, it seemed like, thank God, there were a lot of people right there in a hospital that was not very far away. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the timing is crucial. I think, you know, it, it's, it's like anyone, anyone else's field, right? The more you do something, the, the more comfortable you are with it and the more comfortable you are seeing it. And in cardiology, unfortunately, we see cardiac arrest quite frequently. And, and the vast majority of those, I'd say 99% of those are in the hospital where we have equipment, nurses and drugs, and like you said, medical personnel that are trained to handle this. And we form a team approach and we, each person of that team knows their role and we can get this addressed very quickly. Uh, what we're not used to seeing is this happen to a 24 year old young man who's a professional athlete on a football field, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Again, our typical injuries are, are orthopedic injuries. They're not medical emergencies for the vast majority of the time. And, and so, uh, you know, their staffing and, and expertise is more focused on that. Now, I, I think uh, once they recognize quickly it was not a, a, an orthopedic issue or, a, or necessarily a neurologic issue, you know, they, they did what they're trained to do, initiated CPR, got the AED, I presume delivered the shock and, and restored the rhythm, uh, but it, it, it it's never even even as I was watching it as a cardiologist, I was still shocked, like everyone else, because you just don't expect to see it in that setting, right? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, obviously, Paul brought this up. The statement was released by the family. There was some information released by the Bills late late into the night, and now still in critical condition. Um, and right now just trying to keep his body, right, just calm, uh, sedated? Is that kind of what – and I'm not asking you to guess. I'm just asking you in these particular cases what now is important. Yeah, you know, it, it, I guess it kind of depends on what the neurologic status is, again, because that kind of will dictate how they treat. Uh, if, we, if we do have a patient that has some neurologic impairment, uh, or evidence of potential brain injury. Uh, like I said, we cool those patients. That'll occur for 24 hours, the cooling. Uh, and then you would slowly warm them up after that. And, and so this, you know, if, if that's the case, or in those cases where there, where there are some concerns about brain injury, uh, you know, that could take two days to kind of decipher and, and, and clarify. Um, if there's evidence that he's awake and moving things and following commands, uh, you know, then really the, the next step is to, number one, make sure the blood pressure and the rhythm stay uh, 
in a normal range. Uh, so those are, you know, our vital signs that we typically monitor. And, and then the next thing after that would be to, to get them extubated or get them off that ventilator to where he could breathe on his own. We have a lot of people that watch this show, and Dr. Goswami, a lot of people very impressed and also thankful for kind of helping clarify and give us some knowledge of differences that happen with heart trauma, et cetera, reactions. And we appreciate your time so much. We appreciate you, and, and have a great day. Oh, it was my pleasure, guys. Thanks for having me on, and uh, I'm hopeful for a full recovery for this young man. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Dr. Neelis Goswami. Interventional Cardiologist, Director of the Cardiac Cath Lab, Baylor Scott & White, Hillcrest Hospital. Thanks to Matt Rohr for helping set up that segment with us as well. And a lot of